Hey guys, welcome back, another video. So this time I have my Creality CR10S Pro V2. It's had a lot of issues and I'll cover that in a little bit here. And it was time to make it reliable. So we did the Bontec DDX upgrade to it. And well, I'll tell you shortly what I think of it. But let me go through step by step how this whole process worked out. It was a very bumpy road to get to where I'm at now. And what I'm gonna do in the video here is show you step by step how this upgrade went together and whether it's all worth it. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hey, welcome back. So first of all, welcome to my channel where nerdy is cool. My name is Paul and I'm big into all things nerdy. I'm big into 3D printing. I've made my Stormtrooper suit. I have an R2D2, I have a Batman suit. I have a lot of printers. <laughs> so let's just stop there. Uh, so welcome. If you've never seen me before, consider becoming a subscriber. 95% of you guys are not subscribers. Hit that button down below and become one. Thanks. Okay, so let me give you the background of this printer. This printer came to me as a Facebook Marketplace used printer. The only upgrade it had was the Wham Bam Surface. So cool to Wham Bam. And one of the issues I had early on was extrusion issues. So I thought, well, maybe if I just replace the stock extruder on the back with the Bontech extruder, things will be better. And filament was definitely pushing through better, but I was still having jams or a lot of prints would be incomplete. And I thought, well, it must be the Bowden tube because it looks like the Bowden tube, when it goes into the hot end, it was getting cooked. I kept on trimming that and every few weeks it would work well and then stop working well again. So that's it, that's it, that's it. It's time for an upgrade. So I was looking around and like my other machines that feature Bontech upgrades, I went with the Bontech DDX. Now the Bontech DDX comes in several flavors, they call them phases. And the one that I went with because I didn't want to do a lot of changes was the phase two. So the phase two comes with the slice engineering copperhead and then you can use their nozzles. And that's pretty much it. You are reusing the uh, Creality thermosistor and the heater. Uh, basically, you're just removing the Creality heater block and replacing it with copperhead and everything plugs into that. So, and then of course the DDX direct drive system goes in. Now, it got a little tricky along the way and that's why I wanna preface all this stuff here as we go through a little bit later here showing you step-by-step -step how this went together. I also want to make clear that this is not a sponsored video. Nothing, I got nothing for free. I wish. Oh. <laughs> Everything I paid for with me, myself, and I incorporated. <laughs> so just want to put that out there in case anyone's wondering or if YouTube wants to tag me as a sponsored video. It wasn't. So that said, it's a very laborious process to get this guy all apart and, and get everything working and working reliably, which I'll be happy to show you here in a second. But that's the gist. I want to give you a little bit of the background and away we go. First thing that's going to have to go is the uh, current extruder and that stepper motor on the bottom here. That's all going to have to go. The uh, filament detector will stay and then we'll work our way towards the printhead. Okay, motor's out. We left the cable. Just gotta get the Bowden tube and we remove the retaining cable. Now it's time to get to the step. Okay, front face is off, fans are off, all kinds of parts. Okay, we just got the hot end out and I don't know how good you can see that here with the GoPro, but you can see how the, uh, this has been 
cooked a few times and it looks like it's some material that's been stuck in the uh, Bowden tube here. You can see it's orange. So that might explain some of my extrusion woes. Very gently, you get this guy out <clears throat> and these guys out. Okay, stop right there. So pay attention to what I'm doing right here. Because when I put it together, I did it wrong. Right there, you see me moving the heater around. The logo should be facing the back of the DDX. And I was watching the video doing the assembly and I couldn't really see the proper way to do it. But <laughs> this does affect some things in future steps. So make sure that you have it facing properly. So hopefully this saves you some angst if you go through this process too. Okay, this is pretty well done. This is from the, of course, the Bontech YouTube channel. This is gonna show how you're gonna trim the Bowden tube, the Capricorn tube rather, and make sure you have a very sharp knife. Mine was not, so it was a little bit of a struggle to do this properly. And easy peasy, it's cut. And now you have the Capricorn tube to the proper distance to work with the extruder. And this next step, uh, it, Basically, you're just loosening the body so that everything will slide in. Now, here's where the continuity issues got me uh, because the hot end that they're gonna put in here is gonna have the stock reality heater block and nozzle. So I was trying to find the right way to uh, face the sliced logo. And as you can see, here's what tripped me up. So remember, if you're using the carpet head, you want that sliced logo to be facing the back, not the front, but the, but the back. So they don't really show you what to do there. So we're gonna take this guy off. So now we gotta get this guy. Okay, future Paul here again. So this part was not a whole lot of fun, but the one thing you wanna do is take your time and make sure you adjust that eccentric nut so you have the right tightness. Not too tight, not too loose. All right, we had to take the uh, lower wheel off to get the deal touch mount off, which is this thing. So now that is cleared out. Okay, another important step here is make sure you have the right BL touch mount. I've highlighted it here. You can get it from the Bontech website. You want the universal BL touch mount because it's a little bit longer. So you wanna make sure you have the right stuff. And when you print it, you may wanna make sure you use a high temperature material because if your printer's enclosed, I mean, it's gonna be near the heat. You wanna use something higher temp, not PLA. I'd go with PETG, ABS, or something high temp that you're comfortable using. Okay, so one of the riddles here is in order for this to be able to be adjustable, I'll slide up and down, um, right now just installing this, uh, this is one hole, this is the other. Uh, if I install this bottom one, there's no ability to slide this up and down and adjust it. So it looks like I'm stuck with just one. Uh, which is kind of interesting because I'm just kind of looking at where this is in relation to the nozzle. And it's obviously gonna have to go up a bit. So it's kind of too bad that this second hole can't be up a little higher or this BL touch mount can't have a, well, it really can't because it'll make contact with this here. So it's an interesting design. Um, 
So I guess we'll stick with one and uh, try to move that up. We'll have to shove these wires in here. I'm gonna just mount it back up. But uh, yeah, I was hoping for uh, a little bit more support for this mount, but we'll see. Uh, there are, uh, I was looking in the back there, there are uh, square nuts there to hold it in. So that should suffice, but it's always nice to have two. Okay, again, I'm borrowing from one of the videos from the Bontech YouTube channel. This shows the uh, motor wire adapter cable going on. And the big takeaway here is that you're routing all the wires uh, into this uh, groove here that's in the back. And the takeaway, again, is you want to make sure that when you do attach this to the gantry, you're not pinching any wires. You want everything to fit, but you don't want to obviously pinch any wires. The assembly I found for mine was, you know, looking through a variety of the Bontech videos, their documentation, uh, with help from their support, uh, I was able to kind of piece together the proper assembly instruction. And I'm hoping this video will help you, uh, kind of as one-stop shopping here for all the things that we're doing between these videos. So here we're getting everything lined up on the gantry. We're again checking wires, making sure everything is fitting into the groove because again, you don't want to pinch anything. And everything attaches with these two screws. And here you can see they really got that hot end and uh, they have the mobile face in the back. I wish I'd caught that. And again, we're checking to make sure we have enough room because we still got to attach fans, heater, therm resistor. So before we go too crazy tight, we want to make sure we have all the slack we need with all those wires. And then there's the hot end cooling fan going on. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so this is a little metal shim, and I'm using that for the offset here for the BL touch. And this shim is 3.05 millimeters thick. And if we look at the documentation here for the BL touch, it tells us it wants to be between 2.3 and 4.3 uh, from the tip of the BL touch to the tip of the nozzle. So we have that, and I wish we had two screws uh, to tighten up, but we have one, it's uh, nice and tight. So there we go, another step done. Okay, after all that moving around, what I like to do is I have some of these leftover uh, parts from the enclosure build, uh, two identical pieces. So what I like to do is put one on one side, put one on the other side, and kind of make sure that the gantry is good and square and that will uh, help with the leveling process we'll have to do here shortly here with the, uh, the BL Touch. Uh, the other thing is uh, the filament sensor back here. I'm not going to use that. I've not been a fan of the filament sensor. So to override that, I'll just stick some filament in there. Uh, so it will never bother me. Uh, and then to the top here is gonna be where the uh, uh, Capricorn tubing is gonna come out from here. It'll go uh, out the top of the enclosure into the dry box. We'll get that set up here shortly so you can see it, but this is uh, almost done. Point 0.7. Okay, and they're saying between 0.4, so I guess we'll go for the middle and go 0.5. So we're right smack in the middle of the range they, they suggest. And uh, that's all back together. And boop, let me stop you there. 
So we got it together, we did the calibrations and everything was great. We did the PID auto tune on the hot end, uh, eight cycles. Same thing with the bed at 60 degrees Celsius, eight cycles. And we were struggling to get to temperature and I was suddenly getting this error. So, ah, what do I do? Well, let me show you. Okay, so we're apart again. So what was happening with test prints is that the prints weren't starting. Uh, we were not able to get past 197 degrees Celsius. So that leads to two things. Either the thermosistor is not reading properly and just something going on there, uh, or a bad heater. And when the printer was idle doing nothing, it was reading room temperature. So I don't believe it's my thermosistor. I bought some spare ones, so if I have to, I can use that. So what I did is I snipped off the old Creality one. Creality uh, uses a 40 watt heater. And I was hoping I could use one of my, I have several spare E3D heater cartridges, but those are only 30 watt. So I decided, well, let's go big. So I went with the Slice Engineering heater cartridge, which is also 24 volt, but 50 watts. So that has been done. As you can see over here, I've done all of the uh, uh, soldering here. Uh, I went with the uh, uh, Western Union, you know, <laughs> twist them together and that whole bit. Uh, I thought about using, you know, these quick connects, uh, you know, the, uh, the solder with the uh, shrink wrap around them. Uh, but because this is a moving part, uh, I thought that the uh, Western Union connection would be stronger. And uh, so we went with that. And I gave myself plenty of extra cable. So I'll have a nice little loom in the back here to tighten up. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to do was cut it too short, screw up the soldering and run out of wire before I got to the heater. Uh, just trying to plan for all contingencies. So now it's time to put the boron nitrate paste on this guy and insert this back in here and get this guy all back together. And fingers crossed, we can get some test prints going. Okay, so I went this far, so why not make sure I have the latest firmware for the screen and for the machine. So I reached out to Tiny Machines and they were gracious enough to give me a hand, but they pointed me in the direction also of the Insanity Automation on GitHub. Uh, this is something that they support. I believe Bontech does too. So if you're put off by GitHub, don't know your way around it, uh, you can certainly reach out to those guys and ask for help. Uh, Bontech, you'll see here in just a second, also has a firmware page. And uh, that basically leads to a, a kind of a web version of the uh, uh, firmware listings. A again, if you have questions, because it can be very overwhelming, I mean, because there's a lot of factors, BL touch, do you have it or not, and so on. So feel free to ask if you need help. The other thing of importance here is this is the firmware that I'm using on my machine that's working great. There's the hex file 743 and the screen files. Now, important thing to make sure is if you're gonna flash your screen, you need to format it properly. So here you go, you format. If you do this by default, it won't work. You gotta set it to 4096 bytes, then format, and then off you go. That format will be complete. And when you go to insert this into the printer, it will read it, otherwise it won't update. And just a reminder, here is where the uh, card plugs in. It, pro tip, when you're done, make sure you remove it. It would really suck to bolt everything back together and not have that out. Ask me how I know. And this is what it looks like when it boots up with the uh, uh, screen firmware. You're gonna get a blue screen. And we'll sit and pause here for a little while while it's copying files. Now, if you've done it wrong, <laughs> if you didn't format properly, you'll only get this far. If you've done it properly, after this step, you're gonna see a lot of animation where you're gonna see these uh, screen files actually copying over. And there they go. So here's a sign of success. You're, you're the, they're copying the files over. And at the very end, you'll see at the blue screen on the top line where it will also give you a uh, message where it was successful. There it is, SD card end. Okay, when it boots up, that's what you're gonna see and you hear all kinds of noise and you'll see the printer and version number across the top. Okay, the next steps are gonna be, of course, the bed leveling and building the mesh. There's a great uh, video by Tiny Machines on their website that shows in great detail how to do this. Just take your time, let it run, and then off you go. Okay, after you've done your PID auto tune for your bed and, and for your hot end, you can do that right through the tools menu. Uh, I started doing some test prints, and as you can hear, I have a real screamer of a part fan, which I've already ordered a replacement for. Here's one of my first Benchy prints. It's the Pro Series PLA from uh, Matter Hackers. It's always a little stringy, but look at the layers. It looks really good. All 
right, we're doing a temp tower here on some uh, different material. This is uh, Arion matte blue. Print's really nice. And um, turns out uh, 210 is kind of the sweet spot here. Did a flow test. Got a little elephant's foot there. I kind of brought the Z down a little too much on the baby stepping. But looks really nice. So on to bigger things. Went ahead and what this is one of my favorite ones. The cat, the kitten print. I mean, just does a great job with overhangs and uh, it just looks really good. Uh, I love giving these away to friends that have little kids. And it did a really nice drop with this one. And then Luby the Dragon. Uh, outside of a little bit of stringing, I, I might have to fine tune my retraction a little bit here, but this came out fantastic. Okay, then it was time to put a uh, 0.8 nozzle on here and print something useful. This is a cat food bowl holder. And uh, I didn't spend a lot of time uh, tuning in that 0.8 nozzle. I got quite a bit of string going on here. Need to tweak a few things with the uh, bigger bead, but this came out great and the cats love it. Okay, so the big question, right? You saw the prints, they came out pretty good. Um, you know, I would give them probably, you know, a B plus because I should have spent some more time tuning my profile. But right now, I just wanted to do some test prints. Uh, like I said, I started small. We did a little three hour one, then we did a uh, five hour. And then of course, this guy went 10 hours uh, using a 0.8 nozzle. And like I said, I feel really comfortable that this thing is gonna become a workhorse again. So yeah, I do feel it was worth it. It was a good upgrade. It wasn't terribly expensive and the support is out there. So, yay. Just want to say thanks to Tiny Machines for all the support they gave me as far as the firmware and the screen software. Uh, they were also gracious enough to answer some of my questions because I know that they offer this as an upgrade on some of the CR10 Pros they sell. So I was wondering if they ran into the same issues I did. And they didn't, of course, it's always just me. And I also want to say thank you to Jonathan over at Bontech. I appreciate him answering my emails. He was very good. He always made sure, hey, I'm here to help, um, you know, let me know what you need. So very much appreciate that. You won't get that from the clone folks. So stop buying clone parts. Support the inventors, support the makers. Sorry, I decided to blurt that out. So that's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you find it useful. I look forward to your comments in the comment section below. If you want to see what I'm up to, check me out on social media. I am on Twitter, I am on Instagram, and I'm on Facebook. And the website is in limbo right now. So we're working on that. So I thank you guys for watching and remember, this is where nerdy is cool. Take care.